Happy Sunday. Welcome, Rock family. My name is Brandon. And I'm Becky from the Rock Living Room to yours. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today, especially if it's your first time. That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> and if it's your first time, we got something special for you. We're excited to yes. worship with you. We have our incredible worship team and a guest worship leader, Matt Brock, Woo! as well. It's going to be an exciting <laughs> time. So click that share button. Let's enjoy the service together. What's going on, Rock Church and family all around the world? We are so glad that you are here to worship with us today. Listen, Psalms 104, 33 says, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. Can we sing together as one voice family? Come on.
to roll, we believe it. I feel the faith that is starting to rise. And I see the world on the edge of revival. I think it's only a matter of time. people just the act of worship is so special I love worship because it gives us a chance to align ourselves with what's going on in heaven it allows us to experience what's going on in heaven and earth and I want to teach you all a new song that's that's just that it's just aligning our voices it's aligning our words our hearts with what's already taken place in heaven right now it's just singing the song that the angels are singing in heaven right at this moment it's a really simple song. The chorus just goes like this. Holy, holy, Lord Almighty, this is the song of heaven, song that will
song that will never end. You spoke the light into darkness. Shaking the silence of space Set everything into motion Bring out your praise Creation is telling a story Unveiling the depths of your love Each detail revealing wonder of All that you've done
such an incredible time to be led by Mac Brock in worship yes. and our worship team. I just love it. So yes. awesome. Yes. Just anytime we get together to worship God in spirit and in truth, because that's what he deserves, mm. our worship. Amen. So, family, we're glad you're joining us. We're so glad you're joining us. My name is Brandon. And I'm Becky from The Rock Living Room to yours. Welcome. We're so glad you're here today. Yes. And if you're new, you want to get connected, find out ways to get connected by texting INFO mm -hmm. to 52525 or visit sdrock.com slash info. Yes. And shout out to our online family. Shout, shout out. out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we love everyone who's part of our online campus. And also, we want you to know that if you are here mm -hmm. in SD, San That's Diego, right. Right? right, we have a couple opportunities for you each week to participate in church in person. That's right. Indoor in services. Hey. <laughs> exactly. Indoor <laughs> services are back at our campuses at 10 a.m and 12 p.m. with the exception of Chula Vista mm. and microsites. They're still enjoying the outdoor life. Mm. They're about that life outside, and that's a <laughs> blessing. But learn more about the indoor services by texting Sunday to 52525 or visit sdrock.com slash Sunday for all the details of our indoor services. Yes, and also Wednesday Night Live is in full swing. Oh, it's swinging, yes. It is. <laughs> it's going. Okay, it's yes. good. Wednesday Night Live is a behind-the-scenes look at Pastor Miles' preaching and an opportunity to worship together in community and yes. just see how it looks to, to have the taping, right? To be That's broadcasted. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So come join us this Wednesday for all the information. Text Wednesday to 52525 or visit srock.com backslash Wednesday to learn more. That's right. And we're excited. Can you, we're already in May. Wow. And next week is Mother's Day. <laughs> wow. Next hey. week is Mother's Day. So make sure Mom to tune day. in. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. Tune in for a special Mother's Day service next week. And once again, click that share button and let's enjoy the rest of the service together. What's up, Rock family? What's up, Rock family? Come on now. We are, I am so excited. I'm Miles and Fierce and Pastor of the Rock Church, and we are so excited about this message. Uh, all of you out there, please hit the share button. Get this message to all your friends all around the world. We got people all around the world tuned in. Before we start, let's get on our knees and pray. Let's get on our knees and pray, everybody. And we are going to constantly get on our knees and remind ourselves who's boss. And that is him, Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for um, just your word, your faithfulness, your power. We pray you bless our time together. Speak to us. Challenge us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's get our Bibles out. Let's get our Bibles out. Hey, grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles on the count of three, say word. One, two, three, say word. Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. One of my favorite, favorite stories in the Bible. One of my favorite stories in the Bible. 1 Samuel 17. Um, I started ministry with a group of Filipino kids in a town called Rancho Penasquitas here in San Diego. These kids, teenagers, were standing out in front of my house drinking beer and throwing beer bottles on my lawn. And I had never seen Filipinos before. I didn't know what nationality they were. And they were throwing beer bottles on my lawn. So I went over to them and said, hey, yo, man, what are y'all? And they said, oh, we Filipino. I said, okay, Filipino, man, stop throwing beer bottles on my lawn. So I started leading them to the Lord, and they started coming to my house for Bible study every week. I started going to their parties, going to their houses, going to their family gatherings. And then I found out there was going to be a fight between the Filipinos in the neighborhood where I live and the Filipinos in the neighborhood next to us called Mir Mesa. And there was this, going to be this fight at the ice house. It was an ice arena, right, in Mir Mesa. So I figured I'm going to go. So I go up to the ice house and I'm going to go in and break up this fight. Now, all the Filipino kids that I had dealt with were like 5'10 and shorter. And so I'm thinking, this is going to be no big deal. You know, got kids from Mir Mesa, Penasquitas, I'm going there. And I get there, and the guy at the door, he's all nervous. And he's like, yo, man, um, uh, y'all want to get in? I said, yeah, you know, I'm Miles of Fierce. I'm a youth pastor. You think I can get in for free because I don't want to pay because I ain't going here to dance. I'm just going to, you know, go in here to do some ministry. He goes, you can, you can stand at the door and let people in and have control of the door. I was like, why would you do that? He said, well, you know, there's going to be a fight. I said, yeah, some kids from Penasquitas and Mir Mesa are going to fight. And I'm, that's why I'm here. He goes, no, no, no. It's Samoan gangs from L.A. and San Diego. Now, I don't know if you know the difference between uh, Filipinos and Samoans. <laughs> but it's a lot. Okay, it's a lot. <laughs> I remember the first time I seen a Samoan was when I came to California. The brother was my height, my complexion, but 100 pounds bigger than me. And I'm like, brother, you ain't nothing but Samoan Negro. He's just a big brother. That's what he was to me. And, and, and we got, his name was Junior Philly Younger. Uh, uh, we both got 
drafted and cut by the Rams. But so I go in the place, and there's this dude in there, six, seven, three hundred something pounds. And I'm thinking, I'm in trouble because this is a little different than I thought. Because this guy at the door was saying, they're, they're going to shoot the place up and shoot the place up and all this kind of stuff. And this dude was six, seven. Now, thank God the fight between the Filipinos really did happen, and I got to help with that. But I wasn't prepared for six, seven, three hundred something pounds. I want to talk to you today about being a giant killer. Because every single one of y'all have a six, seven, three hundred something pound problem in your life. This is probably one of the most famous stories in the Bible. It's David and Goliath. David and Goliath is a story about a young kid who kills a giant. Goliath was nine feet, nine inches tall, and David was a kid. And David was keeping sheep, and he comes out and kills Goliath. But there was four things we're going to learn about being a giant killer. Number one, giant killers walk by faith, not by sight. If you are going to overcome the problems in your life, you have to walk by faith, by what you believe in your heart, not by what you see. Number two, giant killers know when to step up or grow up. When it's time to walk away from what you used to be to what you are going to be. Number three, giant killers focus on the victories in their past. That God has done amazing things in your past. And number four, giant killers trust God to save the day. They do not save the day. Now, before we get into this, let me first tell you how stories happen in the Bible. In stories or narratives in the Bible, there are people who are God's friends Those are people who promote God's agenda. And then there are people who are God's enemies, people who oppose God's agenda. Now, God's friends can be angels as well. They can be groups, nations. But we're just going to talk about you and me. If you are going to be God's friend, you are someone who promotes God's agenda. But you're always going to have people or groups of people, institutions that oppose God's agenda, and the plot of all the stories in the Bible are when God's friends and God's enemies have a conflict. That's the plot. And so God's friends, Moses was God's friend, Pharaoh was God's enemy, and they had a conflict because Moses said, let my people go, and that was the plot of the story. And in every story, God's friends have a problem that they can't handle, and God has to save the day. So if you are going to be a giant killer, you have to realize I have to be God's friend. I'm going to promote God's agenda. There's always going to be someone opposing you, which is God's enemy. The plot of the story is the conflict between you two, and God has to save the day. So if you have a problem right now and and you want to be God's friend, you have to promote God's agenda and be obedient to God no matter what you feel. And understand there's always going to be people opposing you, talking behind your back, taking, from, t- taking stuff from you, doing you wrong. That's fine. They're the enemy. And, and, and by the way, the bigger they are, the bigger the miracle. Because nothing's too big for God. So you're God's friend. And if you're going to be God's friend, you have to po- uh, promote God's agenda. And then if God's enemy is going to oppose God's agenda in your life, and then the plot of all those stories, because we're all in multiple stories, is the conflict. And then God has to save the day. If God doesn't save the day in your mind, he doesn't get the glory. You do, and you get prideful. And then you become God's enemy. Ooh. God has to get the glory. So if you have a problem that's way too big, it's just in time for God to get the glory. But you have to do certain things. I'm going to give you four. There's a whole bunch of them. I'll give you four. Now, I just gave them to you, but we're going to talk about them. So here's the plot. Here's the story. There's two hills... The Israelites, were, the Israelites were having a war with the Philistines. So there's a hill on one side with the Philistines on top of that hill. The Israelites were on this hill. And then there was a valley in the middle. And every day for 40 days, Goliath, who was 9 feet, 9 inches tall, came down into the valley and said, if one of y'all could come whoop me, we will all be your servants. Let's not all fight. Let's just have one-on-one, mano y mano. And if... Your, your guy can whoop me, we will serve you. But if I whoop your hero, then uh, you guys serve us. So it would be like, you know, back, back in the day when Mike Tyson was the guy, we sent Mike Tyson to, to Russia and they sent out their dude. And if Mike Tyson whoops him, which he would, then th- that's the war. We don't have to have missiles and bombs and all these other people getting hurt. Just one person against one person. So that was the thing. And here's the thing. The, 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 the Philistines sent Goliath out 40 days in a row. Every day, talking trash. 
trash talking didn't start like, you know, in Brooklyn. It started in the Bible. Okay. <laughs> Talking trash, talking trash, talking trash. If y'all with me, y'all send somebody out, send somebody. And nobody would come. The Jews were scared. And then uh, Jesse had eight sons. His youngest was David. His oldest sons were at war. They were not fighting. And David um, gets sent to bring cheese to his brothers out at the battlefield. Go bring your brothers some food, some snacks, some, some Cheetos and whatever. And then come back. David goes out, a little kid, and he hears the giant talking trash, and he goes, I can whoop him. And that's who becomes the giant killer. So let's read the story. Chapter, chapter 17, verse 23. It says, chapter 17, verse 23, 1 Samuel. As he talked with them, as David talked with his brothers, there was a champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same words. So David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw, everybody say when they saw. When they saw. When they saw him. When they heard him. When they felt the ground shake from nine feet, nine inches tall, whatever, how much he weighed. When they could feel the thunder of his voice. The Bible says they fled from him and were dreadfully Afraid. Number one in your notes, giant killers, giant killers walk by faith, not by sight. We are three-dimensional people. We have a body that interacts with the world. We interact with sound, sight, smell, uh, proprioception. Proprioception is the ability of you to know where your limbs are and you are in space. In other words, you can close your eyes, most people, and just put your hand on your nose like that. Okay, you can do this and just put a hand. My proprioception tells me where my finger is in relation to my nose. Okay, when you get drunk, your proprioception gets thrown off, and so you're trying to look for the ground, okay, and your balance gets thrown, gets thrown off. When you eat a lot, your stomach stretches, and the proprioceptors in your stomach tell you when you're full. They tell you that your stomach's too big. So our body interacts with space and sound and feeling and smells. Our spirit interacts with the, the invisible kingdom. Okay. By faith, we receive information from our eyes. We receive information from our ears. We receive information from our, our sense of touch and smell and, and temperature. And we take all that information and often we give it to our soul and say, make a decision. But we need, what, what, what our soul needs to say is I'm going to submit it to the spirit of God by faith. Why? Because your senses will give you information and come up with a conclusion. But the conclusion can't be based on your knowledge. It can't be based on your experience. It must be based on God's promise. That's where the faith comes in. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, not seen. So even though you see danger, even though you see challenge, even though you see an obstacle, what faith says, I see something more. Faith goes beyond your senses. And so you take everything your senses give you and you submit it to faith and say, God, here's what I am thinking should happen or here's, what, here's the information I got. And God may say, that, all that information is true, it's just not the whole truth. So go. When we, when we bought this building, we didn't have enough money and we had a month to raise $8 million. And, and, and we're like, okay, God, what do you, no one in here has the money. Matter of fact, our consultant who was helping us raise the money said, nobody in your church can help you raise that money. You have to go to that one person that promised a bunch of money. That one person never gave it. And all of a sudden out of nowhere. Now, that consultant was going by data. We said, we just got to trust God by faith. And then God delivered somebody who incredibly gave us an incredible amount of money to, to, to close the deal to get this building. So faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen or not focused on what you see. So if you're going to be a giant killer, you're going to have challenges and obstacles that are, this guy's nine feet inches tall. I'm a little kid. This don't make any sense. God, what do you see? Oh, I see something. I'm so much bigger than him. Look behind him. There's 50,000 angels, 10 times his size, that no one else can see. That's what I want you to see. Number two, giant killers know when to step up or grow up. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Verse 31, verse 31. 
It says, when the words of David, which David started telling his brothers, yo, I can whoop him, I can whoop him, I can whoop him, I can whoop him. And, and, and word got out to the king, Saul, there's a kid here who can whoop the, whoop the giant because all the Jews were running for 40 days. By the way, Goliath taught trash for 40 days. 40 is the number of testing. It rained 40 days and 40 nights with Noah. Perfect judgment. Elijah, Moses, and Jesus all fasted 40 days. Moses lived 40 years with Pharaoh, 40 years in the desert, and 40 years as a leader of the Israelites, three times 40. Jesus fasted 40 days. When you are in your mother's womb, you have brainwaves after 40 days. A woman is pregnant 40 weeks, not nine months. And so 40, 40, I think we can go on and on to the break of dawn. There's so many 40s in the Bible. But 40 is the number of testing. So when David, I mean, when Goliath talked trash for 40 days, he didn't know that he was getting ready to get his behind whooped on day 40. Because <laughs> God had enough. And so, so David's out there saying, telling people, I can whoop him, I can whoop him. And look what it says in verse 31. When the words of David were spoken, were heard, they reported them to the king Saul. And he said, then they sent for him, and David said to Saul, let no man's, <laughs> this is a little kid, let no man's heart fail. Your servant can go fight the Philistine. And Saul said to David, watch this, watch this, you are not able to fight the Philistine, for you are only a little kid. Watch this, you're only a little kid, and he's been a man of war since he was a kid. How's he a man when he's a kid? How's he a man of war since he was a kid? He trained like a man or he trained like an adult. Are you a man or woman of war? And I mean war, spiritual warfare, battle, mature, going to go after it. Or are you acting like a child? When God doesn't, when things don't go your way and God doesn't do what you want, do you, <laughs> I'm not going to read my Bible. And like you're hurting God. I'm not going to go to church like you're hurting God. But this is, the, this is the best part. I love this. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Ver, verse 33, let's read that again. Then we're going to get to verse 34. One of my favorite verses in the Bible. Saul said to David, you are not able to go up against the Philistine to fight, for you are only a kid, a youth. And he is a man of war from his youth. And David said to Saul, your servant used to keep. Everyone say used to keep. Used to keep. He said, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went, what? Knocked it out and took it from him and delivered the lamb out of its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard, struck it and killed it. K-I-L-T. Here's what he said. Say used to. Say used to. Say used to. He was keeping sheep that day. That day. So, so, so let's set the scene. David's brothers are out there at war. He's taking care of his sheep, feeding the sheep, doing his thing. And his father says, go bring some cheese to your brothers. And he goes, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. And he goes out. I know that was corny, but it was really good. And he goes, goes out. And then he hears the, 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 the uh, Goliath talking trash. And he says, I, you, <laughs> the king wants to see you. He gets all the sheep fuzz off his body. <laughs> I'm not a shepherd anymore. I'm a giant killer. And he said, King, I used to keep sheep. But now I'm ready for ha that fool right there. So when, what is your used to be? There's something that you're holding on to that needs to be a used to be in your life. I spoke at a prison once. It was a, a guys and girls. And I spoke five times to the guys and two times to the girls, the ladies. And whenever I speak to women in prison, it, 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 it's, it's, so much, it's so much more sad because of the, the kids involved, the babies, and half of them are crying the whole time. And it's, it's heartbreaking. And this one particular time I spoke, these ladies were telling me, we're getting out soon and we're not coming back. And I said, no, 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 you can't come back. Whatever got you here, whatever life you had, now I know a lot of has to happen in, 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 in the people you're around and the, the perspective you have about yourself because I know the devil will get in your head and beat you down, beat you down. But you have to put that life behind you. You have to put those people behind you, those habits. You have to identify what you used to be, 
what you used to do. And all, you have to do the same thing. What is your I was blind, now I see story? There's a guy who Jesus healed. He healed it. He couldn't see. He was blind. And then God gave him his sight. <laughs> Trip. God just spit in the ground, made mud, put it in his eyes, and the brother can see. He says, I'm going to go put my, wash my face in this mud. Then I'm going to come back and get you for spitting in my eye. But then when he, <laughs> but then he got his sight. And they're like, the religious Pharisees like, Jesus didn't heal you. He's, he's a sinner. And he, here's what the guy said. I don't know about all that. I don't know if he's a sinner or not. I don't know what y'all got against that brother. All I know is I used to be blind. Now I see. I used to be. So what is your used to be? At some point, if you're going to be a giant killer, there has to be, there is something in your life. There's something about you that needs to be in the past. It needs to die about you. And God's going to give you opportunities to talk to people. He's going to give you opportunities to pray for people in public. He's going to give you opportunities uh, to make a fool of yourself in front of people. Trying to talk Spanish when you really can't talk Spanish. And you just got to get over it and say, you know what? I'm good. I'm, going to, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to go up to that guy in the restaurant and pray for him. I'm going to go up to that person at my job and ask him how I can pray for him. I'm going to go invite someone to church. And if I get rejected and laughed at, I'm good. That has to, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to sleep in when I should be getting up and spending time with God when it's really quiet no one's around. Because I think if I spend an, another hour in bed, I'm going to be any better or I'm going to be more beautiful. You've been sleeping for 20, 30 years. <laughs> and another hour ain't going to make that much difference. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> The glory of God. I'm going to tell you something as a tangent talking about beauty sleep. I, when I was in high school, there was this girl that I had a big crush on. And I used to see her in the hallway. And I would just walk like parallel. <laughs> I don't think I ever talked to her. <laughs> Not for real. I don't think I ever, I don't ha ever remember having a conversation with her. And I don't even remember her name. I just remember there was something and she wasn't like, fine. <laughs> that the girlfriend I had was fine. But there was something about it. You know what? And, and I don't even know this is fact. I'm guessing, because I never met her, that she had God. Amen. And it was like coming out of her. Amen. And I was like, and, and here's the thing, and, I, and, and this could be my complete imagination, but I think the Holy Spirit was saying, do not go near her. Because I'd be like, ah. and she would just walk down the hall with her books, and something was like, uh, stay back. My point is this, if God is on your side, no one could be against you. And if God is in you, full of you, God will bring the right person to you. And so you have to by faith say, I'm not going to be that person anymore. I'm going to get in my word. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be generous. I'm going to be a servant. I'm going to be what God has called me to be and stop tripping on all these identities that I'm holding on to that don't do me any good. David said, I used to keep sheep, but I am going to whoop him today. <laughs> Look what it says, look what it says. David said, verse 34, David said, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or bear came out and took the, out of the, the lamb out of the flock, I went after it, struck it, and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Number three, giant killers focus on past victories. Verse 36, your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, watch this. This is, this, is, this is something that you have to think about every day. The Lord who delivered me in the past from the paw of the lion, the Lord who delivered me in the past from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me in the future from this Philistine. You have a God that delivered you in the past. That's done miracles of God in your past. 
And you have to remember and meditate. God got me through droves. God got me through heartache. God got me through a breakup. God got me through, through bankruptcy. God got me through being lost. Wanting to kill my, can, I, can I get amen? God got you through. And if God got you through in the past, if God got you through in the past, oh, he is going to get you through in the future. And so when, 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 whenever you see this big giant, stop back and go, step back and go, okay, by faith, God, show me what you see. By faith, step back and say, God, I'm, it's time for me to step up. Step back and say, God, when have you done this before? And he will say, we don't have enough time for me to tell you all, just go. <laughs> but I, you, I've got you through before. Look at number four. Giant killers trust God to save the day. At the end of the day, God needs to get the glory. What does that mean? That victory has to come in a way where you go, oh, snap, I can't explain it. Before we started this church, I was preaching at another church. And just on Sunday night, and we went from 600 people to 3,000 people. And it was Crazy people. We had a five o'clock service and a seven o'clock service, and at five oh one the room was full, and at seven oh one the room was full. It was insane. And someone said to me, someone said to me, "How?" Here were his exact words: "How do you do this?" I said, "Well, number one, if you ask me that question, you will understand the answer because it ain't me. This is this is a perfect example of God." And I remember a pastor came there and he had heard about it and he came and he talked to me after. He said, you know, I heard about everything that was going on there. And I came and the first thing I thought was, you don't have a suit on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me tell you something. God get the glory. God get the glory. We always think it's got to be this way, it's got to be this way. God said, no, 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 I do it my way. It's my way. So look what happened. This is going to be a long passage. This is when David and Goliath, they're going, they going to talk trash. They're going to get it on. And David's going to whoop him. So what it says. Verse 42. He's going to whoop him. This is, this, is, this, is, this is talking trash Bible level. Now, anytime you see soap operas and, you know, drama with, you know, people cheating on and murder, all that stuff's in the Bible. The Bible is a soap, got drama. And one of the things the Bible has is trash talking right here. Look what it says. Verse 42. When the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, looked down on him, disrespected him for he was only a kid, ruddy and good looking. He hadn't shaved yet. He had his hair combed, a little brill cream, whatever, had some moose in his hair. And the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come out here with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and beasts of the field. What? Now, he didn't say come to me and I'm going to whoop you. Come to me and I'm going to kill you and the animal's going to eat you. I mean, who says that? <laughs> Can you imagine being at school? Yo, man, step over that line and the birds are going to eat your flesh. That's what he said. Verse 45, David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. And this day, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head. Take your head and this day I will give the carcasses of the whole camp of the Philistines, your whole army, to the birds of the air and the wild beasts. And all the earth may know that God, there is a God in Israel. Then all the assembly shall know that the Lord does not say with sword spear, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. By the way, here's what he said. God doesn't say by a sword or a spear. God's not going to save you by your good looks, by your personality, by money. He has his own way. He does his own thing. And so when you think, well, I don't have what it takes, you have God. God uses the foolish to confound the wise. You may think, well, I'm not educated, I'm not talented. If God called you, that's all you need. That's all you need. There will be people, I get it, to this day, who look at me and say, you know, you're not qualified to do that. Still to this day, still to this day. Well, only person that, that really needs to decide that is God. And then you walk with God. And so if you feel like God has called you to do something, there's always going to be obstacles. There's always going to be obstacles. 
I am personally always still to this day learning how to address the obstacles in my life for what God has called me to do. To this very day, always. And it, it amazes me how faithful God is. And then look what happened. Verse 48, so it was when the Philistine rose and came drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in the bag, took out a stone, slung it and struck the Philistine in his head. And the stone sank in his forehead and he fell to, to the earth. And David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling of the stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. David ran. They ran at each other. And David ran and threw the, in slow motion. <laughs> And that all the Jews on the hill were like watching the rock. He better not miss. Bam, bam. Jesus, Moses, and God, the Father, went on a golfing. They were at a par five, 500 par five. Moses, 350 yards right down the middle. Jesus says, good shot, Mo. Jesus gets up. 400 yards right down there. Moses said, good shot, Lord. This old man, it, it was Jesus, 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 Moses, this old man. Old man walks up with a cane. With a cane. Hits the driver with one hand. 50 yards slice. Goes into the water. Sinks in the water. A fish grabs the ball. Swims to the top. An eagle comes. Grabs the fish. <laughs> flies over the hole and the fish opens his mouth, the ball goes in the hole. And Jesus and Moses look at each other and Jesus says to the old man, good shot, dad. <laughs> That's how God operates. In a minute we're going to pray and here's my challenge to you. Is that you say, Lord, I want to be a giant killer. I, I want you to guide me to conquer the giant in my life. There is a Goliath in your life. But first you have to surrender your life to Christ and say, I'm going to do it your way. So I'm going to ask all of you right where you're at, bow your heads and close your eyes and listen very carefully. Lord, thank you that you put these stories in the Bible to illustrate to us how faithful you are. How awesome you are. Thank you for the victory that David had over Goliath. But we all have giants today, obstacles that are scary, overwhelming, that we need to surrender to you. We need to surrender our fear to you, our doubt. And we need to walk by faith, not by sight. We need to step up when it's time to step up. We need to focus on the past victories in our life. And at the end of the day, give you the glory. If you would like to give your burden to God, pray this prayer with me right now. Pray, dear God, I trust that you are bigger than my Goliath. I surrender my Goliath to you. I surrender my fear to you. I surrender my life to you. I want to walk by faith and confront the obstacles that, you, that are in my life that I may honor you with who I am and what I do. I surrender my life to you. Fill me with the spirit of God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, please text the word SAVE to 52525. And if you say, listen, I didn't get saved, but you prayed that prayer, we want to help you in your journey. This is a journey. David was a little kid. He became king. He walked a long time with God and God taught him many lessons and he made many mistakes. That's how we have to trust God from this point forward through the rest of our life. And I want to thank you. For listening and thank you for taking the challenge because I know that the Holy Spirit has spoken to you. And we get when we come to this part of the service, we want to give you an opportunity to invest financially in this ministry. 
God has given you the ability to be generous. He's given you a heart to be generous. And we want to give you that opportunity right now. But I want to share a short story with you about David. David grew up, became king, and he made a mistake. He made many mistakes. But in this particular story, he made a mistake. And God punished him by sending a plague to kill the people. And David was like, God, please, please don't kill the people. I made a mistake. And so he built an altar and made a sacrifice to God to appease God and to ask for forgiveness and stop the plague. One of the things about giving is that when you give, it's not about you losing something. It's not also about you investing in the kingdom. But it also is you giving your gift an assignment to accomplish something. In other words, if you take a seed, an apple seed, and you put it in the ground, the apple seed has an assignment. The assignment is to grow an apple seed, an apple tree. It has information. It has a purpose. If you take an orange seed and put it in the ground, that seed has an assignment. The assignment is to grow an orange tree. David's offering had an assignment. It was directly related to repenting of what he did and asking God to stop the plague. Let me read this to you. In 2 Samuel chapter 24, 25, the king said to Arana, no, but I will surely buy it from you. He bought a piece of land to build this altar and make the sacrifice. I will surely buy it from you for a price, nor will I offer a burnt offering to the Lord my God with, with that which cost me nothing. David wanted to give something that he paid for that was value to him. He wanted to make a sacrifice so he can pray and ask for forgiveness for what he had done so the people would be saved. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. And David built an altar, offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord heeded the prayers for the land and the plague was withdrawn from Israel. What's the point? The point is that when you give... Don't just say, here's my money. Attach a prayer to that seed that you give. Say, God, I want you to increase my faith. God, I want you to bless my family. I want you to bring healing to my family. Attach an assignment to your gift. Attach your faith to your gift. When you give your seed an assignment, when you give your offering assignment, it acknowledges the spiritual power of the gift. Let me, if, if, if giving did not have any power, why would we do it? It has something to do with your heart. has something to do in the kingdom. In spiritual realms that, that, that are beyond my understanding. But he gave it an assignment. He says, I am going to offer this offering, his particular assignment, to repent for what I did so those people would be healed. It was all about other people. So giving your seed an assignment acknowledges the spiritual power of giving. Giving your seed an assignment gives focus to your faith. Imagine if you, listen, when you pray and say, Lord, Lord, I need a job. Don't ask God for a job, by the way. Ask God for a career. Don't ask God for something to do. Ask God to show you your purpose. If you're not happy at your job, you're not fulfilling your purpose. Now, it doesn't mean your job may be difficult in this season because people or whatever. But if you are in your purpose, you will get up every day ready to keep fighting. And giving your seed an assignment builds your expectation that you're actually giving and saying, what's God going to do? You're not just giving and then the devil says, oh, you, you could have done this with that money. You could. No, no, no. That money is going to do something in the spiritual realm. That's bigger than I can imagine. And what I have faith for is, is that job, that relationship, that person's health, that person's healing. That's what I'm giving to us. And watch what happens. So if you want to give, I want you to text the word give to 52525 and there will be a, a note sent to you that can enable you to give. But I want to pray that whatever assignment you give to your offering today. That God will show you his fulfillment of that assignment. And it may be part one and then there's a part two because he's going to have you walk it out over time possibly. But I want to challenge you to give your gift, your financial gift, an assignment that is directly related to something God is doing in your life and God and through your life with somebody else. So let's pray right now. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness. And I pray clarity on the assignment on every single gift, financial gift 
offering investment in the kingdom being made today. And I pray you would make that clear to people that they would, that they would think, man, what, what could that be? That they would think about the most difficult thing in their life, the most difficult thing in someone else's life that they want to pray and a blessing over and that they want to invest in the kingdom towards. Move in their life and bless them a hundredfold on the back end. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, God bless you. Next week, we are going to have an incredible Mother's Day special. And I'm going to tell you, when we were preparing this and we're still putting it together, I was in tears. It's, it's going to be so powerful. And we love our mothers, El Dia de la Madre. We love our mothers. And uh, we just pray that it would be a blessing to you. So we'll see you next Sunday for Mother's Day. God bless you. I love you. Dios te bendiga. That was such a great sermon from our pastor, yeah. Giant Killers. Yes, David and Goliath. I love it. Classic. <laughs> it, it is a classic story. It's so encouraging. It's to be reminded of the things in our life that need to be killed, those giants. Mm. What are some things in your life that you're like, I need to slay this giant? Mm. You know, something that kind of reoccurs um, is comparison, right? Yeah. We can get caught oh, yeah. up in that. It's it's truly the thief of joy. It is. Especially in the social media world, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That is so, that's definitely something I struggle with, too, saying, okay, this person looks like a great father, a great husband, and how come I'm not doing that? Or right. how can I be better at that? But God truly does have a unique calling for each of us. And that's something that God showed David too. Right. He had to slay that giant, not out of his own power, not out of his own strength, but by God's spirit and family. God is right. with you. We don't have to slay these giants alone. God's power is with us. Whether it's fatherhood, parenting, whether it's school, whether it's motherhood, God is with us. Speaking of motherhood, Mother's Day what? is next week, family. Next week? Yes, How make sure you tune in. We want to honor and celebrate all the moms in our church, whether you are currently a mom, mm -hmm. if you're a spiritual mom, or mom to be, That's right? right? Or, you know, at the same time, family, we want to recognize that this is a this can be a challenging day for a mm -hmm. lot of people. Maybe yeah. you've lost your mom. Mm -hmm. Maybe God has put that desire in your heart to be a mom, but you're struggling with infertility. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we want to lift you up. We want to just celebrate you and honor you on Sunday. So please tune in. Yes, it's going to be a special service. And we also have life class. We always want to remind you about that. It's a great way to get plugged into the life of the church and learn about the gifts that God has placed in your hands to be used for his glory. So mm -hmm. text the word info to 52525 to learn learn more about life class. Yes, and part of discipleship is also making sure we're walking in community, That's right. right? Through groups. So please, if you have not yet joined a group, maybe God's calling you to lead a group, come. Right. We, we want everyone to be living in community. So That's please right. text info to 52525. That is right. And last but not least, indoor services are back. Yes. We're so excited <laughs> about that. 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. at many locations throughout San Diego. Go to sgrock.com slash Sunday to find out all the details of yes. indoor services. Yes, and of course, Sunday is just the tip of the iceberg. Make sure you follow us all week long on our social media platforms at yes. The Rock San Diego. Keep up to date. There's so much going on. That's right. All so kinds of good things. From The Rock Living Room to yours, we love you, family. Have a blessed week.